Hey friends, and welcome back to another chapter of Don't Feed the Bully. So in our last chapter, chapter 9, um, a lot happened. Kurt had one of his goons, who I can't remember the name of right now, so let me look back. Had Zach um, put a plastic knife in Handy's backpack and then tried to get him in trouble by getting the principal. But Handy was able to think fast, right? Remember he was able to think fast and he turned it into a troll pop? Which is hilarious. He told, he said it was an art project, and he was able to get out of trouble. So, at the very end of the chapter, he asked if he could go to the nurse's office. So, I wonder why he's going to the nurse's office. What do you think? Do you think he's going to go check on Anson, the boy who had mace on his glasses? Let's find out. Are you ready? Chapter 10. Anson was getting in a puddle, was sitting in a puddle in the nurse's office, his eyes stinging, but the pain was bearable. The nurse was on the phone with one of the Summerhead parents. Yes, please come down right away and we will explain further, she said. No, his glasses were not broken, but he will need to see his doctor right away. His eyes were swollen and red, but he should be fine. No, he's, his glasses are fine. Okay, after school then, goodbye. A stab of sadness for Anson swept through me and not for the mace in his eyes. Mr. Greatneck, the nurse said, you did a great job today. Thanks, Handy, Anson threw in slowly between sniffs. I hear pepper spray can really clear the sinuses, I said, trying to raise Anson's spirits. Do you know who might have done this? the nurse asked. In a normal school or situation, I would have related my suspicions, but this was as normal as a haunted house on Christmas. Kurt still had the power and would have had his lackeys do the dirty work. He was getting desperate, though. His failure meant Kurt would have to up the ante and risk exposing his entire operation to stop me. Telling the nurse the truth now would be as useful as showing UFO magazine pictures of stomped down corn in a circle and screaming about how the aliens abducted you. They would print it. But no one would really believe you. I couldn't tell you, I said, technically not a lie, but I made it sound as if I didn't know. Maybe somebody who didn't know how much damage it would cause? I thought we'd clean up these kinds of problems, the nurse said. Anson and I both shook our heads. The nurse figured we were agreeing with her. We knew it was pity for her ignorance in our future. I got a pass back to class and walked to Mrs. Austin's room. Still a little damp and anticipating the faces of my classmates. I knew they were talking about the incident already. I slipped in the room to hear Mrs. Austin telling how dangerous pranks can be, and she hoped the guilty party would turn themselves in to spare themselves expense and suspension or worse. I handed her my pass and felt, very, felt every eye follow me to my seat as if my wet limbs were really on fire. Mrs. Austin finished her speech and waited, as if the villain would suddenly leap up and confess for the good of William B. Travis and the men of the Alamo. I will never understand how many times a tactic has, not, has to not work before teachers will give it up. No one made a sound. The silence became as uncomfortable as when my cousin comes to Grandma's house for Christmas and tells dirty jokes around the table. No response forthcoming, Mrs. Austin told us to read or do homework until the end of the day. Kayla went to the front of the room to talk to Mrs. Austin and slipped a note under my book on the way back to her desk. It said, same time, same place, and my allowance. And there ends chapter 10. That was a very short chapter. What do you think Kurt's going to do next? Because he's really going to have to do something maybe even desperate in order to get Handy in trouble because Handy's pretty smart. And what do you think Kalo's note meant? Same time, same place in my allowance. What do you think? Let me know down below. Also, I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're doing our spirit dress ups for this week. I miss you all. I miss your faces. I hope you're having a good time at home and I hope you're helping out. You're being kind and you're helping your parents out. <sighs> See you later, guys. Bye, friends.